Good morning everybody and welcome. My name is Richard Simons. I've got a fantastic video for you here today. So with the price of electricity getting higher and higher in this energy crisis, we need to make sure our electric vehicles can squeeze the most amount of miles out of each kilowatt hour of electricity. So here today I've gathered up a few of the more efficient electric vehicles. I'm going to put them in a head-to-head -head battle to see which one can eat the most miles out of every kilowatt hour, which is the most efficient car and which one would cost the least amount to run. Okay, so let's try and have a bit of fun with this video as well. What I want to do is drive each of these cars in convoy at the same speed, at the same time, on the same road, which is always the best way to get a true comparison. You drive them each on separately on different days, you're going to get different results. And I'm going to drive them on a loop, which is going to be fairly similar to perhaps an average commute to work. And on the end of each lap of this loop, we're going to eliminate the car which has used the most amount of electricity, the least efficient car there is out there. And we'll keep doing this circuit until we get to a winner, the most efficient electric vehicle you can get. Along the way, we'll also uh, be able to compare the running costs compared to petrol and diesel as well. So I'll give you some of those figures at the end because obviously electricity now is quite expensive, much more than it was a few months ago. And so petrol and diesel, how they compare, are electric cars still cheaper to run? I'll tell you at the end of the video. So what's in the lineup? Well, we've got one of the cars running the company here. One of the classic, uh, most efficient electric vehicles out there, well known, the original of Hyundai Ioniq 28 kilowatt hours battery front wheel drive. And we've got the new MG4. This car is just a couple of weeks old. The long range, in fact, this is the trophy edition. Uh, this is a rear wheel drive car, about 60 kilowatt hours of usable battery. Then we've got the Hyundai Kona over here. Again, well established as being a very efficient EV. That is a front wheel drive vehicle. Then we've got one of the benchmarks, the Tesla Model 3 Standard. This is a rear wheel drive car with the LFP battery, always remarkably efficient, despite the fact it's actually a bigger car than some of the others here. And then we've got a Cupra Born, 58 kilowatt hours rear wheel drive, very similar in size, I think, to the MG4. So that'd be a great comparison between those two. And again, a good average size family car. And then we've got the car I'm gonna jump in here. This is a Seat Me. You don't see so many of these. It's the same as a VW E up and a Skoda City Go. And this car here, I'm gonna drive. And then just to add into the mix as a kind of benchmark comparison, we've got my colleague CIA Surge here. He's gonna do one of two things. One, he's gonna be our policeman, our traffic cop. He's gonna be at the back of the lineup checking people who aren't going super slow to try and cheat and get maximum efficiency. We want the cars, so everyone's gonna be trying to get efficiency, but I don't want people to call along at 10 miles an hour. So our traffic cop here, Surge, is gonna to monitor that. And he's gonna be in a two litre Mercedes diesel. And so this would be a benchmark if you normally run a two litre diesel, what will the miles per gallon be on this and how the running cost of that compared to our electric cars? We're just doing predictions on which car we think will be out first. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Uh, what do you reckon, Ross? This is the owner. Thank you for bringing down your Kona. Thank you, Ross. Uh, what car do you think is going to be out first? I think the MG4. Do you? Ooh, controversial comment there. <laughs> Gins, what car do you think is going to be out first? Cupra. Cupra. Yeah. See so the Cupra. Yeah, I'll go Cupra as well, but we don't know. They're all pretty good, but we'll see. We'll see. Right, let's get in the cars. We're going to reset the trips and get going. Okay, everybody, reset your trips, and I want everyone to have their climate control set to auto at 20 degrees Celsius. No cheating now. No turning your heating off, we've got to keep this real world, but it's warm outside, 16 degrees Celsius, sunny, no wind, so we won't really, the heating's not going to be working too hard and using up too much energy, so I think that's fair. Is everybody ready? Okay, let's roll out. We've just all reset the trips at the same time, let's go. Go on then, you peel out. Here you go first, right, drive. I've got adjustable regen in this thing, so I can move this around. Let's go, everyone ready? All right, I'm in the middle of the pack. Not with the window, it's not going to lose efficiency with the window open, do we? Okay, off we go. So this route, I'm just trying to do something which is not dissimilar to the type of journey you might do for a commute. We don't really have any motorways near us and I can't really go through the depths of city traffic because when you're in a convoy like this and when we've done previous videos, you go through cities, you get separated. Cars are sat at red traffic lights for longer or stuck at roundabouts. So I'm just trying to create a lap here, mainly country roads, where 
we can all just drive at the same speed at the same time. You'd be surprised how difficult it is to keep a convoy together when you do differently. Oh, I'm going to go to regen as we come up to a junction here. There we go, get the most out of it. The best way to get efficiency, and I've taught this in an advanced driving course years ago, is not how much you accelerate, it's how much you don't brake. So, keeping that, keep the car rolling, predict what's ahead. There we go, everyone's with us now. So that's the right hand turn, and we're trying to do as little of those as possible because it's more likely that we get separated again. Uh, so mainly left hand turns on this loop. Again, just try and keep the flow, keep everyone together, keep it real world with the heating and climate control on, and driving at the speed limits where it's safe to do so. Look, just keeping it all moving, and let's see what we get place your bets so we'll be mixing around the order that we're traveling in each lap but there's not really going to be any air roads. you see we're not going very quickly we're kind of on country roads and stuff there's a, another car tucked in between us it's not like when you're traveling at a constant 70 you might slipstream each other it doesn't work like that really at this speed so i don't think that's going to matter if it does it's by tiny tiny amounts that we yeah futile to include i haven't driven the mg4 before but probably will a bit later on today and there should be another video coming on that soon so stay subscribed and we'll uh, have a little go in that and the review and uh, give you some more opinion on that but it's going to be a bit sad whoever gets limited first i mean i've driven apart from the mg all these cars and they can all be very efficient they're all good they're all low cost cars we've not included yeah, Porsche Taycans in this. We know they're less efficient. Model X, Tesla, we know it's less efficient. There's a lot of other cars which really don't cost much more to run than this in terms of electric efficiency. But from my experience, these are some of the most efficient versions. What I would have liked in this test, of course, is perhaps a Fiat 500e, Mini Electra, a couple of the other smaller, super efficient cars. Uh, but it's just impossible to get everything on the same day. We've not been able to do it yet, but we can always run more videos when we do have the opportunity with those cars and cars like the uh, ionic 28 there one of our own cars so we've got a benchmark that we can run those against in the future i want to give a big shout out to david the mg4 there for coming all the way along in his own car and helping us out for the day um, fantastic of you to do so david thank you and also ross and stacy they live closer to us but again they've given up two of their cars for the day and ross as well as the driver take day off work so Put your comments down in below. Thank you to David, Ross, Stacey for your cars and for allowing us to do this test. Okay, so this is Judge Joe. He's got all our results. We're all eagerly awaiting. It'd be sad to see one go, actually. But um, yeah, okay, Joe, good. don't give out any actual efficiency apart from the loser and what their miles per kilo hour is. Ready, steady? I don't think it'd be me. <laughs> so the loser Definitely with uh, 4.7 is David. In oh, the MG. In the MG, oh no God. way. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> oh no. What, well, I went wrong, David. Well, it was 4.8 when I stopped over there. Yeah, Would I'm that have won it? No. <laughs> okay, that didn't work too much. Okay, well, David's eliminated from it. Go! Uh, if you want to do, if you want to join for the next lap, just to see if things change and pan out. And by the way, I know what people will say here. Maybe that car was cold or hadn't been used. Actually, David had the longest journey to us this morning and he topped up on the Charger and the other cars were colder. So that is a surprise, but the uh, MG4 doesn't have a heat pump, does it, David? So, but I don't think there's heating on at the moment. I've got air conditioning coming out of my say, I think. Uh, okay, well, that's not really the result I wanted. I wanted to run some more miles with the MG so that we uh, get to see more of that. But, well, it is what it is. That's the test. It's eliminated. And it was test. probably the warmest car here. But we'll do another test on that later on. Okay, well, that's <laughs> it for that lap. David can put his feet up for a minute. We're going to go and do another lap in the other cars. So, uh, we are leaving the trips running. None of them were reset. And I wanted to do that because then the more we drive, when we get to like the most efficient two cars, the more of an average their efficiency will be rather than kind of a, a lucky lap or something like that, you know. So let's leave it like that. Again, climate control, also 20 degrees, same conditions. And let's see what we got. Uh, this is very, very good. <laughs> not that it's going to be a biased result or nothing. Not that, you know, I've picked the winner easily. Let's know what I'm doing or something. <laughs> Okay, end of round two, what have we got, Joe? So, uh, loser, this time, 
is actually by point one, Igor in the Cupra. Hey! Oh. <laughs> but the MG, finish, yeah. the MG, which was eliminated, pipped him with uh, 5.4, I'll reveal that, because there's only that tiny bit between them just that one point. Okay, so I think it was always going to be between those two initially. That was yeah, my gut feeling. Yeah. Um, obviously, I know I've picked the winning car. <laughs> you know, <laughs> a bit of experience with this, son. <laughs> okay, lap three, just get on with it. I, I've only just found there's an eco button in this. So yeah, <laughs> didn't think there was, but you know, there is. Uh, there's also eco plus, but that turns off the air conditioning, but that's against the rules. Auto climate control, 20 degrees. Uh, just the eco seems to run that. That's fine, I'll start comfortable. There we go. All right, Joe's on a handover, so this time it's Judge Amy. Amy, after the third run, who's got the lowest number? Who's out? Gintz. Gintz in the Tesla. The Tesla's out. The Tesla's out. Do you know what? I would say maybe uh, on the third run we should do, uh, the fourth run now, it'd be we should do higher speed stuff, but it's the Tesla that's out. The Tesla, I think, on a motorway would probably quite easily equal those. It's remarkably good. But this, not everyone's commute is on a motorway, is it? So. 5.8, by the way. Okay, right. So, after three rounds of a lap, the Tesla is out, the benchmark for efficiency. So that leaves us with the Seat Mi, it leaves us with the Hyundai Kona, and the original Hyundai Ionic Mark. It's going well, isn't it? Okay, right, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to carry on, and we'll find out who's the winner, which of these cars is the most efficient, or the most talented driver, because I'm just going to blame Gintz. Uh, if, if I was driving that Gintz, it would have been all right. No way. You would, you, be out, you would be out in the first run. You got 5.8 now. But it was so that's like 180 watt hours per mile or something? 71. Okay, my mass was out. Yeah, but I was doing <laughs> 6.1 before. Okay, all right. Yeah, interesting. Mm. Interesting. And, and that's, so it's got worse as it's warmed up? Yeah. It's not exactly hot today. Um, it's midday. It's what, 16, 17 degrees, isn't it? <laughs> all right, let's have a quick break and we'll come back in a minute. This is now going to be the last lap. We're down to the final three, and then we'll call the winner at the end of this. Uh, so we've got the original Hyundai down there, the Armadillo. The Kona's doing well, and then we've got the Mi. So I think with this one, I might just mix it up a little bit, and I might include some, uh, now the traffic's a bit lighter, include a bit of dual carriage weight, so that we've got a bit more of a mixture. I think if there was more motorway, uh, the Tesla would still probably be right at the top here. Um, but again, we're trying to simulate a bit of everything here with what's available to us today and the time we've got and all that kind of thing. So yeah, I'll we'll include a little bit of your carriage way in this one. So we get a bit of an all round mixture of everything. So we get up to 70, which could dent the efficiency to me. I don't think it's especially aerodynamic. So ooh, we'll see, we'll see. Right, we're ready, let's go. Final three contenders in reverse order. Okay, so in reverse order, uh, do you want to know the actual figure now? Yeah, go yeah so it. with 6.0, it's Ross, well done, third yeah, place. Kind of didn't do too bad. That's and then bad. in uh, second place with 6.6, .6, it's uh, Mark. Hey, well done, Mark. Did well. That's right. And then in first place with 7.1, it's me. Oh, no, it's Richard. <laughs> Richard in uh, his Seat. So well, well done, Richard. No, no, you, well, well done for win, winning again. That was lucky, wasn't well it? Well done. How, 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 judge, oh, no problem at all. That's uh, 55 pounds at least. Uh, so, so you were this the whole time in the Mercedes diesel. What did you get? Uh, 37. 37? Is that yeah. all? Yeah. So that car's good on the motorway. Mm. It, it can do good. But that, so that's a good comparison. So I think we were quite efficient. It was fairly slow roads most of the way. 
So the electric cars are more efficient at the slower speeds, for sure. Oh, definitely. But if you're driving a diesel and doing the same journey, even from a modern, economical diesel, not the smallest one, you can get more economical, but it's pretty good, that car. Yeah, yeah. 37. So there we go. Okay, what I'm going to do is just calculate a few numbers and we'll wrap up the video in a second. Well, I think that was really interesting. Uh, very efficient EVs. And didn't the older Hyundai do really well as well? I mean, we know that's a consistently economical car, always has been. We drive that car daily, so that is quite consistent with figures we can achieve from that car. It was a fairly economical run all round with the weather today and generally not very high speeds. Anyway, what I want to do now is give you a bit of number crunch in here. But just to try and explain and put it in context, the current increased price of energy now in October 2022 is 34 pence per kilowatt hour domestic rate. So for every 34 pence, you can travel over seven miles in one of these cars here. I've worked out some figures based on the current average diesel and petrol prices. If this was the petrol version of the little say it like this, you'd have to average 104 miles per gallon to equal the same running costs per mile based on the current average electric versus petrol. Now, I also worked out what that journey that we've done today, we totaled just under 55 miles in the end, and that would have cost us £2.85 in this little say it. Not much more in these cars. In the diesel Mercedes, that has cost us £11.80 in diesel. And that's a modern, fairly efficient diesel. If we were doing more motorway miles, granted that would have changed slightly. The electric cars would be a bit less efficient there. The diesel would be a bit more efficient. But uh, we, I've got another video where, again, we're demonstrating at motorway speeds, efficiency of electric versus petrol and diesel, and electric is still much cheaper based on home energy charging tariffs. So I hope that's been really interesting. I think we'll wrap it up from there. Very efficient cars, brilliant vehicles. Other electric vehicles could be included, but we'll run tests on them another day. So lots of small electric cars will be doing similar results to these. And then when you go to the larger cars, yes, they would be a little bit less, but still running costs far cheaper than petrol and diesel, especially just on general average commuting. So let's call it a wrap for that video for now. Thank you for watching. I hope it's been interesting and we'll see you on the next one. And thanks very much to the people that have brought their cars to us today as well. Much appreciated. And if you're ever interested in the future, leave a comment below, maybe get in contact. If you've got Fiat 500e, I'd like to test that. Anyway, that'll do for now. See you soon.